All right, so we had just gotten done talking in the last videos about gluconeogenesis, but now we're going to kind of switch gears and we're going to be talking about preparing things for the Krebs cycle, more specifically the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, and this is done through the use of a something known as a pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. The end of product of the result of this reaction is going to be acetyl-CoA, CO2, and then two electrons. Um, notes that we may want to make about this in case you don't remember from general biology or microbiology maybe, depending on where it was that you actually got a thorough education of this stuff. This is all happening in the mitochondrial matrix. The rest of these reactions, I'm gonna be drawing them out in the smallest pen size possible. Um, please watch this in full screen if you need to. One of the things that the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex does is we couple the reactions in order to preserve the Gibbs free energy. And I would encourage you to Google images of the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. It's this very large, you know, super molecule of <laughs> of three different types of enzymes and the outermost of it there's these uh, the E1 enzymes and then the, the core of it we have E2 and then kind of in between we have E3. Uh, you don't really need to know the identities of E1, E2, E3 for the purposes of this but it's also kind of nice because their names do kind of tell you what's happening but I'm just going to go ahead and, and for the purposes of writing this out just say E1, E2, E3. First thing that we want to be doing is decarboxylation. You don't really need to understand the mechanism of this in terms of like the specific structures in organic chemistry. I do think it is important that we draw out what's happening to our reactants because we can clearly see uh, whether or not we've had oxidation or reduction or something along those lines happening. So um, the way that I'm going to draw this is going to be very uh, kind of oddly looking abbreviated structures. Um, but the first uh, thing that we have in the E1 as a co cofactor is tyrosine, or not tyrosine, sorry, thymine pyrophosphate, or TP. TPP is a catalytic coenzyme, and so it's a, it's a coenzyme that acts as a catalysis reagent, right? So it's going to be regenerated at the end of this. And the only part that I think is important in terms of understanding is that it has a carbanion. And TPP is going to react with pyruvate, and I've drawn the structure of pyruvate. Uh, like that hopefully to explain what's going to happen. So this reaction happens and we are going to be using an acid, acidic uh, situations, if I can find a color for that. So this gives us CO2, which I've drawn in blue to indicate where the CO2 came from in the process of decarboxylation, and then hydroxyethyl TPP. There's the structure of hydroxyethyl TPP. This is um, the major resonance structure, and as you remember from organic chemistry, the minor one would involve placing a uh, carbon ion uh, by placing an alone pair on top of one of these guys. Um, I think you can just deduce from the structure what has happened. We had a very strong nucleophile reacting to and then a proton transfer and then the removal of a leaving group. And in this context, the leaving group was the CO2. Uh, mechanism of it is not really that important um, as much as you understand that we've just removed a carboxylate group. All this is just step one. The next step is oxidation. Now, lipoamide uh, is actually also a catalytic coenzyme. Um, it's derived from lipoic acid, and it has attached to it, and this, I'll explain this like separately, this very long lysine chain that's very flexible, and it's uh, connected to it via an amide bond, which we kind of saw earlier when we talked about biotin. But in this context, it's able to move from one uh, enzyme, con uh, I guess, co com part of this enzyme complex to the next. So in this, it's going to be moving things from E1 to E2 to E3 and, and back and forth and things like that. It's connected to lysine. The, the most important thing that I think you notice is that it's a disulfide bond. What's going to happen is, is this is the oxidation stage. Uh, these two guys here are going to react, and I'm going to draw it happening up here, as this is the directionality of what we're happening here, is that the hydroxyethyl group, this bad boy is going to be oxidized, and then the disulfide bond is going to be reduced. Which we, that's, that's probably not too, uh, I guess, unfamiliar, right? We talked about beta mercaptoethanol involved in that reaction. And what we get out of this is acetyl lipoamide and TPP, right? So TPP is going to be back to the regular form that it's already at, so this reaction can keep happening. And uh, acetyl lipoamide has a thioester bond, which we'll talk about that later. And I just want to draw an abbreviated structure of the acetyl lipoamide. So, as you may have observed, I'm just going to say it like three times, the hydroxyethyl TPP, uh, or the, just the hydroxyethyl group itself, sorry, has been oxidized, and then the disulfide group has been reduced. Hopefully you can see that. I, I can see the reduction reactions happening far more easier for me for whatever reason than oxidations, the addition of a hydrogen. Um, but anyways, the next step that we have in our reaction is to have the transfer of the CoA. Last thing I wanted to say is this is a thioester, which hopefully that should be familiarized with you. Thioester bonds are extremely energy rich. Whenever they're hydrolyzed, it's almost similar to that of the hydrolysis of ATP. 
So, but the next step is going to be the actual transfer of the CoA. This is happening in E2, by the way. So what happens in this, and I know that it's getting kind of crowded and it's really difficult for you to probably to see, um, but um, I didn't underline my lipoamide, is the acetolipoamide is going to react with coenzyme A. There's an abbreviated structure of it, so I just want to make sure that we're talking about step three. The acetolipoamide is going to be reacting with coenzyme A, right? TPP has already been regenerated over here. We're not worried about TPP here. I, should have probably drawn it just as that, but that would have been equally confusing. Uh, this is a lot of stuff to fit into one page. So acetolipoamide is going to react with coenzyme A. Just, just to reiterate that that's what's happening here, right? We're transferring the acetyl group to the CoA. So what this gives us is this gives us acetyl-CoA, right? We've made acetyl-CoA, right? We've, this is the CO2 from here, just to keeping things balanced, but we have dihydrolipoamide, which is in this form, we need to get it back to the regular just disulfide bond, right? And that's what step three is all about, or step four, sorry, is all about. This is happening in the E3 enzyme. So earlier I said that lipoamide is a catalytic coenzyme. That means that we're going to have to regenerate that as a product here. And the way that we do this is we're going to react dihydrolipoamide. Think about something that you could think of that would take away two hydrogens at the same time. Just, just think about that for a second. Obviously, it's going to be FAD, which gives us FADH2 and lipoamide. Now, FADH2, um, this is obviously in the reduced form, so lipoamide has been oxidized. Uh, we're going to actually react this, the molecule of NAD, a, NAD+, plus, sorry, to convert it into NADH, and then obviously H+. Plus. Um, we usually draw that as a side product, but in this context is important. The reason why we're doing this is because uh, NADH actually yields more energy than FADH2 does. Uh, I'll talk about that later. But this is, think about what we just did here, okay? Let's just kind of re-review this long thing that we mentioned there. We had, first thing we had to do to go from pyruvate to making acetyl-CoA, CO2, and then two electrons was decarboxylation, right? So the first step that we had to do is to react it with TPP, a catalytic coenzyme that has a carbon with a negatively charged, so a carbon ion nucleophile, and pyruvate, right? Now I've drawn the structure of pyruvate here. When this reaction happens under acidic conditions, because remember pyruvate is uh, the deprotonated form of an acid if it ends in eight. This gives us CO2, one of our main reactants here, and then hydroxyethyl TPP illustrated here. Hydroxyethyl TPP is going to react with another catalytic coenzyme known as lipoamide, which has, only thing that we need to know about it is that it has a disulfide ridge attached to it. And it's this long lysine chain uh, that's connected to an abine bond of the enzyme complex. Anyways, so TPP, hydroxyethyl TPP reacting with lipoamide is going to uh, actually result in the production of acetyl lipoamide and then regular old-fashioned TPP that we had at the beginning. Now acetyl lipoamide has a thioester bond. Thioester bonds are very rich in energy. And this energy is going to be used to transfer the acetyl group to the CoA, thus giving us acetyl-CoA and then dihydrolipoamide. But I said that this is a catalytic coenzyme, so we have to be able to regenerate the lipoamide to be able to keep doing our reactions at an efficient pace. And we're going to react the dihydrolipoamide with FAD. And this is going to give us FADH2 and regular old-fashioned lipoamide, which can go back to continuing the reaction here. FADH2, however, has to be uh, ultimately reacting with NAD+. Through a redox reaction, I didn't mention it would be NADH, H+, but also we're going to be getting FAD as well um, through our, our reactions here. So FAD, NADH, and then H+, as well, thus regenerating the FAD. So in this reaction, let's label our enzymes. We have TPP as a catalytic enzyme, lipoamide as a catalytic coenzyme, coenzyme A as a stoichiometric coenzyme, meaning it isn't involved in actually catalyzing the reaction, but making sure that we have uh, ultimately a balanced type of equation here. You have acetyl-CoA reacting with, dipo, uh, to, giving us acetyl-CoA and dihydrolipoamide. FADH is a catalytic coenzyme. Sorry, I meant to say FAD is a catalytic coenzyme. How do I know that it's a catalytic coenzyme? Well, the fact that it gets regenerated into its normal state. And then lastly, we have NAD+, which I'm just gonna say that's an S for stoichiometric co. NAD+, reacting as a stoichiometric coenzyme, all right? So that is a lot of information. So what we have is, in this context, three uh, sub, uh, I guess, units of the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, okay? We have one catalytic coenzyme, two catalytic coenzymes, three catalytic coenzymes, 
and then two stoichiometric coenzymes, adding up to a total of five coenzymes in this reaction. And all of this is just so that we can make acetyl-CoA for the purposes of going on to the Krebs cycle and then CO2. So as I do this, and exhale, the CO2 that I am exhaling ultimately resulted from my pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, right, in my mitochondrial matrix. That's a lot of information.